Hey y'all. Let me get everything set up so I can see comments and all that good stuff. How's everybody doing this lovely evening? Hopefully my children aren't being too loud. They're uh, still awake. <laughs> they are still awake. Oh, almost went to the wrong channel. <laughs> uh, we are good, Michelle. Thank you. We are good. Uh, here in Mississippi, we haven't seen uh, anything really happening. We had some storms come through, but other than that, I mean, really nothing major has happened here so uh yeah we're, we're all good we're all good all right i've got my camera off just slightly i think there we go okay let me clean up my desk here a little bit because uh albums are so big so much bigger <laughs> to flip through and i want to make sure we can see the whole thing how is everybody hey ronnie How is everybody this evening? This week kind of drug by for us. <laughs> it, it took a while to make it through. It def definitely took a while. And uh, a friend mentioned that it had been a while since I'd done a live album flip through. And I said, you know what? I don't have a plan for tonight yet. I'm going to do that. I'm going to flip through this final album of 2016. Okay. Yeah, making sure that was good. What just happened? My whole setup just <laughs> decided no. Okay. What are you doing? I'm sorry, guys. My camera just like decided not to stay in place not real sure what that was about come on you behave yourself sorry guys hope that's not like making you ill as i try to <sighs> i'm not sure that's better <laughs> i'll be honest <laughs> but we'll try to do the best we can my desk is still a bit of a mess from doing some scrapping earlier, so don't mind the mess as I try to uh, convince my album to behave. <laughs> or not the album, it's the camera. The album's fine. Okay, we'll see if it will stay now. I have to lift it up a little higher. Will I replace this image? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Hey, Karen. Welcome, welcome. Yes, I probably will. This is the same album I've used for all three albums for 2016. And uh, I probably will replace that, but I haven't done it yet. So in another live quite a while ago, we flipped through albums one and two of 2016. And I've had to shuffle the layouts a little bit and have added more to some of those albums. Not a lot more, but more. So I'm going to let you tell me, would you rather we do all three albums so that you can see everything or just the one album? Because it's pretty packed. Or just the one album in chat. You let me know what you would like to see. Because the other albums have changed slightly and I've had to reshuffle quite a bit. And some of what was in the first album is now in this album. Because <laughs> the center album is my trip to Michigan for that year. Uh, it'll probably take us about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes to get through, through this one. If I do all three, I'll do it more quickly and won't chat as much. So y'all let me know if you what the priority is. Chatting 
or seeing all the layouts. Because I can do either. I'm flexible. Let me know. If not, I can just do this album. We can do a little chatting and we'll just we'll just take our time with this album. <laughs> I won't like try to speed through it. We'll just take our time and chat and look through it slowly. What are you interested in? Because this, one, this one's pretty chunky. It's all of my albums end up pretty chunky if I'm honest. But this one may have like the first four or five layouts in here you may have already seen. I'm cool with that, Michelle. If everybody else is cool with that, I'm cool with that. Because you can always go back and watch. Hey, Gail! You can always go back and watch the other two albums and get a general idea from those. And I'll try to remember to link it in the comments for you. So if you did want to go back and watch those albums, see what was a, what is in them, you can. So I'll do my best to uh, fight the glare. Now, 2016 was back when I used to do pocket pages. And I only did monthly project life. And I just found that the photos that I was putting in the pocket pages, I wanted to put into layouts. Does if that make sense? And so then I felt like, well, either I double scrap them, which takes up even more space, doesn't save me any space, or I would be putting off these layouts and not doing them. <laughs> and these these pocket pages would just sit there until I'd had enough of staring at them and I'd do like a marathon of pocket pages just to get them over with. And that seemed like not great. <laughs> not not a great motivation for scrapping if that makes sense. So this one I do like look here's what kills me guys about pocket pages. I love looking at pocket pages. When I flip through my albums, I love to look at them, but I hate making them. Yeah, it definitely took the joy out of it. I love to look at them. I hate making them. Uh, it's just too restrictive to work inside of these little pockets. And so I've been thinking about possibly letting myself bring back the pocket list pages, which is essentially taking what's on a pocket page and just pasting it down onto a 12 by 12. And I'm considering it. I haven't decided yet. So this was using a hip kit based on Indigo Hills 2. And this is for May, I believe. It says somewhere. <laughs> somewhere on here it says. I just am not seeing it off the top of my head. Maybe I didn't write it down. That's funny. Here, May. May, May, May. So this is from May. Uh, just a bunch of random photos of the kids. This is back when we were homeschooling full time. So all of the kids were at home all day. Kind of like now. Uh, <laughs> except we're not homeschooling the whole crew. So these two were are part of a two page spread here. And I do this pretty frequently where I'll use the same collection for two sides without a continu continuation and I heard uh, who was that I was watching videos this morning someone referred to it as a companion page and I think that that's more the type of two page layout that I do is the companion page where the two go together but they're not exactly the same yes Donna yes Pocket pages just stress me out. I love how they look, you guys. I really do. I think they look so cool, especially in traveler's notebooks. I love the way they look, and I love the restraint <laughs> that people use when they make them. I don't have that restraint, I think, is what my problem is. When I want to add things, I can't do minimal embellishing. I want to go all out. I want to make it the very best it can be. And with these small cards, you have to be minimal. And I get bored and I just don't enjoy it. That's what I run into. Yes. Right, companion page definitely makes more sense to me. I agree, Michelle, completely. Now this one was kind of fun though because it has a little shaker with some sequins in there. And I do really like that 
quite a lot. That was fun to do. I need to get back into making shakers. I really enjoyed them and I have tons of sequins to use. These photos here were from a uh, some sort of a church event. There's a church down the street that we sometimes go to when they have festivals and they had a summer festival. And so I had this really cute picture of the girls in their stroller, but it was tiny. It was a small photo. And I was like, I want to like make this a big deal because it was so cute. But I, did. I was like, it's a tiny photo. And then this was a, I think it was from Paper Issues, this cut file for free that I did some stitching. I'm pretty sure this has a video as well. Using an old pink brush collection for that one. This one was for a challenge of some sort to use wood veneer. And it was based on a layout that I think was by Jen Sko, Scow, Show. <laughs> I don't know how to say her name, but she did something really cool with wood veneer like this and I had to give it a go. Pretty sure there's a video, there's probably a video for most of these if you dig into my playlists a little bit. I keep those playlists as updated as possible so you can find just regular process videos or a series or anything like that, you can find them there. Scow rhymes with cow. Okay, maybe I can remember that. Thank you, Gail. Thank you for that. Because I, I, every time I try to say her name, I think I know this is wrong, right? You know when you go to say a word and you're like, this is not the right way to say this word, but I can't for the life of me pull the right way out of my brain that her name does that to me. This was a six by 12 page that I did for, um, I think this, this looks like those SCT sampler grab bag challenges I was doing. This looks like something from there. And it was of, I'm gonna hold it up so you can see, hopefully we won't have too much glare. Uh, we have a little birdhouse on one of our fence posts and this beautiful bird decided to go ahead and make it her home and I managed from far away using my long lens camera because I didn't want to disturb her. Got some great shots of her feeding her babies and I had to scrap one of them. They were just so cute. So, 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 so cute. So that's one side, six by 12. The other side, <laughs> the other side is these super cute photos of my kids wearing fake mustaches. <laughs> I have no idea why we had those. I have a feeling they were part of a Halloween costume or something like that. Uh, and I don't remember what this was for either, but uh, it was a lot of fun. It's cute, it's pretty cute. Six by 12s are a fun way to just include little stories like that, that maybe don't have enough to them, but uh, I still want to include them. So we have this one here which is our, we loved being at the library. We spent so much time at the library. And, and I know this one has a video for it, but it's probably an older one. Uh, maybe, maybe not, it might be last year, probably last year. Cause I think that's when I was playing with this collection here. And so I have this library love and use lots of those books from the Paige Evans. What is it? Is it, uh, what is the name of that collection? Turn the page, I think. I had fussy cut all of the books from that collection and had them sitting on my desk and then was just determined I was gonna use them because they were so beautiful. So I did. She does a lot of heavily embellished layouts like that, yes. And they always look amazing. They always look amazing. Everything she makes, I'm always like, I would never have thought to do that. She just blows my mind. And it's really funny, I enjoy the her work and Victoria Marie's work and then putting them side by side they're so different because Jen likes to go heavy embellishing and Victoria Marie is much more minimal and much more deliberate like on this cluster is small and has three things and is here and she's very deliberate about where things go whereas often Jen is like Choo, 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 this in here, this in here. <laughs> and I just love both of them. I just, I think they're both very inspirational. Scrappers, I watch them all the time. So this one is uh, fairly recent, actually. I think we, I just finished this album not too long ago. And uh, this one was for Mother's Day. 
This is, and you may remember me scrapping this one because we had a long conversation about this really sweet mother's necklace that my husband got for me with all of the kids' birthstones on it. And it is one of the most treasured pieces of jewelry that I have. He has, he's given me another one that has him and I, his name on it, that is also very, very special to me. So this was my little celebration of Mother's Day. We only had a small picture. Someone else had taken our picture. It might've been my brother. And so I got it from Facebook. And so it wasn't good quality and I had to print it small, but it's there. <laughs> It exists. Very good, very good. Hey, jury's still out. Do you mind telling me a name that I can call you by? Let me find my paper. I have a list of folks who don't use their names. Wendy, okay. I'll just write it down that way. I don't have to call you by your, uh, your long name. It doesn't have to be a real name, just any, any name will do. <laughs> any name you'll answer to. <laughs> I know you have, that's why I was like, I wanna make sure I know your name. I wanna make sure. Oh, thank you, Gail, you're so sweet. Victoria Marie is brilliant, she's on YouTube. If you look up Victoria Marie, you'll find her. It was a gorgeous gift. Yeah, it was a gorgeous gift. Your real name, okay. I'm just, I'm not gonna require you. If, you're, if you wanna be anonymous, I'm cool with you being anonymous. Just give me something to call you that you'll answer to. <laughs> so you know I'm talking to you. Here's another pocket page. This one is for June. I have this picture of my mom's house where she's got this really gorgeous uh, setup here that she had. I think my dad and my brother helped her put it up, but it's got all of the pictures of my kids. It's got my husband and I, my dad and mom, my brother and his wife. This is before the baby. And then his dog and then my uncle Larry. And so a little family side. I just love this so much. And I thought, you know, it's one of those things where you go to somebody's house and you see something and you say, wow, that's really special. I love that so much. And I thought, you know, that that's what it hit me when I saw this. And I thought, I want a picture of that. So I went and took a picture of it. It's also got a couple of arms, coats of arms that she got from Scotland because my family is Scottish on both sides. Not completely Scottish, but to some degree. Yes, yeah, she does a lot of eight and a half by 11s, but she does do 12 by 12 as well. And I really enjoy her quite a lot. She has great, she does a lot of classes, Victoria Marie. Has a ton of classes that are very good. I've taken uh, two, I think, and really enjoyed them. Okay, down here, this is a project that I, <laughs> that I made with the best of intentions and never came to use, we'll say. I took all of, what I did is I bought these boards and then I bought some individual letters. They're mostly in different fonts. The three girls have the same font, I think but everybody else, they're different, and painted them in their colors for their rooms. And we used the twins' boards in their rooms when they were babies, and the boys at that same time. But for some reason, after about six months or so, we had to take them down because they kept messing with them and breaking them. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> oh, goodness. Wi-Fi is doing better, we got an extender on it, and it's doing much, much better. There's a girl that does 12 by 12 layouts with templates and give you all the measurements. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. Are you talking about, you're not talking about Janet, are you? At RTS? I know she does that too. And then I got a picture down here of my kiddos looking through the scrapbook. It's not Janet, okay. Simple Cut Creations, I don't think I've watched her. Yes. Top left here, yes, she is climbing the shelves. 
let me hold it up a little bit so you can see. She's climbing the pantry shelves to get to the, uh, the treats that we had tried to hide on the top shelf. <laughs> and then she and her sister are watching a movie on the tablet. And then this one, Joseph is giving her a great big hug. And on the bottom one, my kiddos are looking through a really old scrapbook. It's not even a scrapbook, it's a photo album. And uh, there are pictures of Alex, I believe it was Alex, yeah, when he was a baby. And uh, just giggling, just having a good old time, just giggling. Yes! They don't normally get along. They're, um, they're very opposite personalities and they really don't get along <laughs> most of the time. Uh, but in that case, they were both pretty enthralled with the tablets. By the way, little tip, I do staple the top of my pocket pages. I don't know if you can even see it. With the little, little tiny attacher stapler so that the cards don't fall out. I hate doing that, I'll be honest. I don't like putting staples through my photos, but it's the only way to keep them in. <laughs> Otherwise, they flip out every single time you handle them, which is so irritating. Another reason I frust get frustrated with pocket pages. So th this was a uh, little homeschool pocket page, kind of bringing in lots of different pictures from different activities and kind of giving a little overview of what we do. So up here we had gone to the library for a uh, art project of some sort. I think it was maybe for Father's Day. Because this is June. And uh, so they were working on that. Yes, they do, they fall out so easily. And then down here we have Joseph uh, reading, which he's always been a kind of reluctant reader. And so I was really excited to get him interested in reading in whatever form that looked like. And over here, he is using a science electricity kind of game. Uh, he really likes it still. It's called Snap Circuits, and it teaches kids about electricity in a safe way. And then at the bottom, I have my three girls. Uh, now, Chloe is doing something that we, kind again, we kind of meet up with Jenga blocks. And I had written math problems on the Jenga blocks. And when she pulled one out, she had to give me the answer to the Jenga block to keep it. <laughs> and then these are the girls coloring on a giant coloring mat. They love to color. They do love to color. Yes, uh, they fall out so easily, you guys. So easily. So this one was an interesting one. I know I did a, a video for this because I got a lot of comments about using this, but it was using the Simple and Sweet collection, but I had this chipboard leftover, it had little chipboard hearts in it, and I used it inside of my layering on this layout backed with pattern paper like a cut file and I'll hold it up so you can see that in a little bit more detail but it was a lot of fun I was really excited to use it because it's just one of those things that you look at it after it's empty and you think this is so pretty how could I throw this out I want to use it and so I did yes 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 so many of those little cards just pop right out. And I just finally one day said, that's enough. And I went through all of my albums that had pocket pages and stapled the tops of all of them. Yes. Cut around the remains of letter stickers. Oh, that's smart. I have done that before. I'm trying to remember. I know what I did it with. I used a sticker sheet from this is from that Simple Stories collection that I use for my memory album. 
and it had a tab shape that I wanted one more of. And so I cut around the outside, but I've already used it. So I cut around the outside of the shape, pulled up the sticker, put it onto a piece of white cardstock, and then cut it out. <laughs> Instant tab shape. <laughs> oh, I need, you know, you'd think to do that more often, but I have such a huge stash at this point. I try not to hoard things, you know? I do try. I don't always succeed, but I do try. And I hate wasting things though, I really do. This is from that kit that I, I was working with for this year and it was for Father's Day and it was using the old Indigo Hills collection. I think I may have had a little bit of old Indigo Hills mixed with new Indigo Hills I think in this kit and uh, this is my grandpa on my mom's side and my husband of course with our, our wild and crazy <laughs> twins being the star of the show of course always always they are definitely a silly squirrely bunch that's for sure trying to get a picture with all five kids is always challenging we'll say <laughs> very challenging this is a really busy layout there's a lot of layers here i'm looking at it and i'm thinking this may have been a scrap lift i want to say this is from scrap lift sunday because this looks like something miranda weber would have picked design wise she has brilliant taste in layering and pushes me all the time which is good because i need it this one was using an amy tangerine kit and this is a six by 12. I thought the crazy colors really matched the coloring on the gifts that they made for my husband. So these are kind of paper mache gifts that they made at the library and they had to decorate them for Father's Day. And so yeah, we did some watercolor tags up here. We've got some sequins here, just kind of lots of bits and pieces, probably whatever was left over. This looks like an end of the kit layout. <laughs> Let's see how much I can get on here. So that is this six by 12. And I know somebody will end up asking me later. I get these six by 12 page protectors from Becky Higgins at Project Life. She has these still, she does carry these. Uh, you should be able to get them. Now this layout coordinates with this layout, but technically the two are unrelated. So this was a fun six by 12 layout that I did, I think if it was on camera, and I don't know if it was, it may have been for a, a quick, quick six by six tricks video, because I know this was a six by six paper pad. And this was celebrating, we'd gotten a new rug in our living room and we had gotten a new bedroom set and, uh, or, you know, sheets and blankets, I should say. And so I was really excited to kind of update the house a little bit because I'm not much of a uh, decorator, I guess. I'm not much of a decorator. Adventure all on its own. So true, so true, Wendy, let me tell you. <laughs> so true. The twins are still a handful and they're seven. <laughs> but this was fun to kind of just cut out some, you know, squares and just go to town. It was really quick, but it was really fun to do. And I think this is like little things as you update your house. I think it's kind of cool to document those small things. And again, this is just a six by 12 layout. It didn't take up much space at all in my album, but it's kind of neat to kind of you know, document those changes throughout your household as well. I just think that's kind of cool. That's something that reminds your kids, oh, I remember when you had that on your bedspread, because actually this was in 2016. We just replaced our bedspread in 2020. So it's possible, you know, looking back and be like, oh, I remember having that. Because <laughs> we have something different already. So this one is for my husband's birthday. Uh, his birthday is right after Father's Day in the U.S. And so I did, using an old Maggie Holmes collection, cut up all of these beautiful flowers and created a wreath. 
just a circle. I think I just had a big circle and I created a wreath to just build on top of it. I love these little acetate butterflies here. Uh, this one's one of my favorites. And I feel like I can get away with florals on this layout because my babies are on there. <laughs> so I can totally get away with it, right? <laughs> I mean, you can use florals on male masculine pages for sure, but I'm always a little hesitant to. I feel like I use florals on almost every page. So when it's something that's just the guys, I try to push myself to do other things as well. This was kind of cool. This is an acetate piece that I cut in half and put one half behind this side and one half behind that side of the wreath just to get the effect of having more than one on the page. And then on this side, this is an older layout. This is using Cheeky Studio, I think. And I don't believe she makes collections anymore. Uh, but I was on her design team a couple of years ago. And she, has it been two years? I think it's been two years. Uh, she had some really cute printable things and florals that I really enjoyed working with. Uh, and I had some sequins on here as well. This is when we went to the Renaissance Fair. When we were homeschooling, we took every opportunity to expand on the learning experience for the kids. We really, really wanted to get them out of the house, get them meeting new people, seeing new things. And we purposely were studying kind of like knights and castles and kings and queens so that when we went to the Renaissance Festival, it would tie in. They would understand what was going on. So I did lots of uh, punch circles down here at the bottom that I just layered, 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 and then fussy cut these florals and did the same thing. Then created a nice big cluster up here just for fun. Just for fun. Yeah, Hannah, I, I noticed, I went looking for her shop the other day and I had noticed that she hadn't made anything in quite a while. But she's still scrapbooking though. I think I've seen her put videos up every once in a while creating with uh, kit clubs and stuff that she subscribes to. So I'm glad to see her still creating. Very creative woman, let me tell you. This one is a very masculine page of my uncle. And he is a wonderful, wonderful man. He comes over every single week, or he did. We have stopped having him over because of the pandemic and he is a driver. So he deals with a lot of the public pretty frequently and is afraid he's gonna bring, uh, you know, sickness to our house. So this was using a Pink Fresh collection. Um, it's one of the boy ones. I don't remember which one. It's kind of, it's one of the more masculine collections. And I had, I struggled with this collection. I really struggled with this collection. This is actually the same photo one in color, one in black and white, which is a fun way of just kind of bringing attention to the subject of the photo. And uh, Olivia is such a little bean in this picture. <laughs> Uncle Larry's giving her a kiss on the head. She's such a sweet pea. She loves the attention though, love the attention. Yeah, she was Cheeky Studio Tuesday. Uh, Ran cheeky studio. I think it's still open. I think she just hasn't made anything new. Oh, she was doing fitness stuff. Okay, yeah, I know she was big into fitness because she she got uh, certified as some kind of a uh, what, what was it? What was it? Trainer? Was it a trainer she was doing? Yes. The these were part of the collection. These the cloth banners. I think they're called. Those were part of the collection. It was like, not travel, but almost like camping themed, I think, or nature themed or something like that. It was a very strange collection. Yes. Okay. Yes. I knew she had gone into that and was really excited about it. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you're doing great with a new job. Makes sense that that would be your focus. I just loved her work though. She had some beautiful, beautiful... Uh, pieces. Very, very, very talented designer. Let's see if I can keep everything knocking over. 
So this one was a really cute one with a cut file. I think I've used this cut file a couple of times, actually. I really like it. It's uh, just a heart with some kind of a sunburst heart. And this is Sophia with my son Joseph's Ninja Turtle. And she had wandered into his room and found this Ninja Turtle and decided that he was her new best friend. And uh, she had him sit next to her. And then when he fell down, she laid down just like he did. And it just cracked me up. It was just too cute. You have to, you have to document those moments, don't you? Because <laughs> they're so stinking cute. Oh, that's funny, Michelle. <laughs> yes, she's very talented. I love to listen to her. She, she has been in the scrappy world for ages. A woman knows what she's talking about, let me tell you. Let me tell you. She knows what she's talking about. Uh, don't mind the squealing. My girls are fighting going to bed. <laughs> Not interested in going to bed tonight, apparently. This one is for Coco Vanilla, and we had done some mixed media backgrounds on a live stream one time, and so this was one of them, and then I cut out a circle to go in the center, added some stitching all the way around, and then just layered florals on top. So I'll try to bring it a little bit closer. My girls are very, very active and they will take any opportunity to get outside on that trampoline. <laughs> that is pretty much how they spend the majority of their time is outside on that trampoline. Oh yeah, I was really excited to get these little tassels on here too. I do like tassels, they're kind of cool looking. It's just kind of tricky to figure out where to put them sometimes. Thank you, Hannah. That's very nice of you. I love watching your mixed media videos. I don't always comment and I'm really bad about that. <laughs> and today I decided you're going to comment on every single video you watch because people are so kind and comment on your videos. The least you can do is go comment on the ones you're watching. <laughs> yes. So this one is a hexagon mini album cut file from Paige Evans. And I turned it into a layout. So what you're supposed to do is take this cut file and uh, fold it into a mini album. But instead of folding it, I just laid it out flat and layered it onto some paper. Uh, the other thing that I did is uh, the opposite of this wood grain, I believe, is this uh, inside bit. So I just layered the two of them together in a slight overlap to make it look like... So I'm really using the same piece of paper is what I'm saying. <laughs> At least I think that's what I did. It looks like what I did. And then I had these really small photos that were really poor quality. So I had to print them tiny. And so I've got three of them on here from our trip to the zoo. Uh, two of these, uh, the Memphis Zoo has a really cool prairie dog area. And the kids can pop, they, you have to like climb in this cave and the kids can pop their heads up into this plexiglass area where they can see the prairie dogs and see from the prairie dog level. And it is so super cool and it's one of my kids favorite parts of going to the zoo. So yeah, I just, this was for a uh, scrap lift Sunday, I know. And Miranda was so impressed that I came up with this. <laughs> we were, we were lifting a, uh, a hexagon layout and I think she was pretty impressed. I came up with that. I was impressed. I came up with that because uh, sometimes I'm not as creative as others. You know, sometimes you have layouts that you're like, all right, that's just another layout done, right? <laughs> and other times it's like, well, that's pretty good. Gotta say, that one turned out all right. <laughs> yes, it would be perfect for a K through six. You're right. 
I didn't even think about that, Wendy. That's a good idea. That would be great because you could put a photo for each grade level. And uh, honestly, you could even do, like you said, K through six, right? Get kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or something like that would be really cool. That would be awesome. This one is the first day of school for my twins going into kindergarten. And it was another scrap lift. We were lifting, Miranda likes to pick some mixed media people because she's a, a mixed media girl. She loves it, loves it, loves it. I love mixed media, but I don't feel confident with mixed media sometimes as far as on layouts. I, I love to play with it, but I'm always on the hill of if I mess it up, then I've wasted supplies. <laughs> Paper is far more forgiving than paint. <laughs> But this one was a lot of fun to do. And it's really funny because I say that, but if I do go mixed media, I almost always like it. It's so funny. It's just a, one of those confidence things, I think, where I think, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> but then I do it and I'm like, actually, I kind of like that. So this one was really cute. We just did some, I freehanded some rainbow stripes and then just added some splatters, which was, I think, what was done in the layout. And then this is an Amy Tangerine collection that I fussy cut out all the florals and hearts and just layered them back behind here. And this was their really, really, really super sweet teacher who I miss so much. She uh, did not end up staying in that position. You know, it's interesting. They've been in the same class because they're in the special ed class. They've been in the same classroom now for, this is their second Second year, actually that may have been preschool, 2016. That would be preschool, now that I'm thinking about it. But she didn't end up staying um, on for kindergarten. But they've been with the same kids for three years now, including preschool. So this layout is fairly recent. Pretty sure last fall is when I was doing uh, this Pink Paisley Auburn Lane collection as a kit. And I'm fairly certain there's a video for this one. I'm barely certain. <laughs> Pretty sure. It's a really sweet one. It's really easy. It's just a, a column, right? You've got a column. I've tucked in extra pocket page cards around here, added a little flourish off to this side and some banners under the florals. Uh, this may have even been was this a six by six? I don't think that was a six by six, but I, I don't remember what this was, but I was using up scraps for sure, for sure. And this guy is my husband's dog that passed away last year, beginning of last year. And he was the sweetest dog on the planet. This is my Emma, who I still have, and they were best of buds, absolutely the best of friends. They were so, so cute. Yes, Paige Evans cut file is still available. Sorry, I missed that. Sorry, Catherine, I did miss that. Yes, it is still available. And I believe it's called a mini album, a hexagon mini album cut file, I'm pretty sure. So that is this one. Like I said, we'll, since we're just doing the one album, we'll get a bit chatty. If you have any questions, or if you've seen me do something or use something and you're like, what is that? Then I, I, I feel free to ask. That's why I do the live so that I can kind of chat with you guys, catch up with everybody, see what y'all are up to, that sort of thing. I know this one was a scrap lift Sunday because <laughs> this was, <laughs> this was so hard. <laughs> this was such a hard layout to do and it is so Miranda style and I love that. I love how it came out, but boy was this one hard. It was using a Dear Lizzie collection from last year, I believe. And uh, this is my sweet friend, Joy. She uh, is one of my best friends that I grew up with in Michigan. And uh, yeah, lots of layers. There was a lot of scraps in this one and it's so chunky, so thick from all of the layers of scraps. It is so nice. It really is. When you, if, <laughs> I don't ever pull them out, but this was one of those layouts that for until I put it away, I just love to touch it 
because the layers have texture. There's even, it's gonna be hard to see, but this white piece right here is actually embossed and it has like a rose embossing pattern on it. That's the way it came, I didn't do that. Then we've got glitter paper and I mean, it's just, oh, oh it's so nice. It's so nice to handle. And uh, it was a fun, it was a fun challenge, but really definitely a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one yes that some of the papers were textured yes which is so is so nice so much fun to work with this one I did for the secret not secret kit club in their crop uh, the challenge was to do a picture in picture so a layout small layout inside of a larger layout so in this case I did an 8 by 8 inside of a 12 by 12 and lots of fun again with the with the textures Christina is brilliant about putting textured stuff in my kits and I love that I love that just this the ribbon and the oh I love it can't, can't get enough of it absolutely adore it but this was her little baby that I went up to Michigan to see and then she later came down to visit our house so I just put these two right next to each other because she brought this cute little baby down to our house to visit and we were able to snuggle on her and Sophia and Olivia were just thrilled to meet her. For some reason though, they didn't want mama holding the baby. <laughs> they were okay with daddy holding the baby, but they did not want me to hold the baby, which was really, really funny. <laughs> it just cracked me up. That was not allowed. Even though I love the snuggle babies, mm, absolutely love it. Makes my heart so happy to snuggle. It's a nice, sweet little baby. That's why I have five. <laughs> I always wanted one more, one more to snuggle. So these are some, these are not cut files, actually. These are from a Heidi Swap stencil, a paper stencil. I actually still have some of the left, leftover bits and pieces from this. So this is from a paper stencil. Those are in a container on my desk that hopefully I'll use them <laughs> someday. <laughs> and I chose to use them as a cut file and layered some florals in here. This is using my Valentine's Day kit from February, I believe. Really, really like how that one came out. I know that one has a video. This one is super cute. I do love grid layouts, but I try not to do them too often because then that's all that would be in my album. But I do really love grid layouts. And this one was using a My Mind's Eye collection. And I had gotten it in a kit, I'm fairly certain. And I loved the bright colors. It's so pretty. And had a lot of fun with this one. These, so you may not be able to tell what's happening here. It's in the journaling. My mother-in-law has a doggy door in her back porch and for her dogs to go in and out as they please. And the girls discovered this doggy door and that they would fit through the doggy door. <laughs> and so I had to catch pictures of them going through that little doggy door because it was so stinking cute. It was just so cute. And I wasn't gonna tell them no because they weren't hurting anything. They were just having fun. I think they've done it. I know Joseph has done it. I don't remember if Chloe was small enough when they moved in that house to have tried. I don't remember. You're jealous your girl was like that. Yes, 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 yes. I love the tags too. I thought that was really fun. I'm sure I saw that somewhere and it got stuck in my head. And I hate it when that happens just because then I can't tell you, well, I was inspired by this person's layout because I go looking for it and can't find it. And so I'm sure I had seen someone use tags like this and thought it looked so cool and the idea just sticks in my head. But yes, I look around Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook. I, I'm always looking for inspiration. And sometimes if I see one that I love, I just, oh, I love that layout. 
I will make sure to save it to show to Miranda so we can use it for a scrap lift Sunday and make sure I'm giving that person credit. But if, I, if I'm busy and I don't save it, sometimes it's just stuck in my head. So this layout is of my twins in the swings at the park. And I did this one for Coco Vanilla. Another little experiment with mixed media, I just swatched some paint in the background just for fun. Did that little trick with this piece, this is a frame. So I cut off a section of it and stuck it over here and the other part of it here, but it looks like there's two separate ones. I was using some cut files. I think these are from Cut To You, I believe. These pretty leaves. The gold leaves are die cuts. I have a, a die that cuts those. And so I know I've used, I do that when I get really bored and I don't want to make anything, <laughs> but I want to do something. I'll cut out little leaves or I will cut out those, punch out those tiny hearts and stars that I keep on my desk in these little containers. These haven't popped out lately. I forget they're in there sometimes because they're in a drawer in my desk. And I'll just sit and punch out tiny hearts and stars from glitter paper and from gold foil paper and pop them into those little containers to use for scattering. Called Scrapbook Tag Grid Layout on Pinterest. Oh, I'll have to look up and see whose that was. Because I'm, I know that I saw that somewhere. But when I went back to look for it, I could not find it. The dog crate. Yes, we have had the kids go into our dog's kennel quite a lot. <laughs> I want to know quite why it's the most interesting thing that ever existed, but apparently it is. So this one is a two page layout and it's using a Dear Lizzie collection. And so we've got a grid on one side and then this one actually was a continuous two pager because I do do that every once in a while, but I just feel like this is kind of um, predictable for me to just do a continuous. That's why I don't do this very often because I don't think it's uh, very exciting. <laughs> fun for a quick layout though. It does make for a really quick layout. You just, you know, lay out your papers and tape them down and embellish and you're done. I mean, there's not really a great deal to worry about. Nothing, nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Just trying to keep it simple. And sometimes simple is good. Sometimes simple is better. And then I have an open space here for a layout that I will show you guys at the end of the month. Uh, but the video for that one hasn't go, gone up yet. It works, you like it. Thanks, Michelle. This one was a lot of fun. This was using Heidi Swamp's uh, Wolf, Wolf collection. Oh my gosh, my brain just totally blanked. Wolf pack. Wolf pack. Yeah, I think you're right, Hannah. I think you're right. I think, and especially in that case where I had a lot of photos, I, I think it was probably best to keep it simple. So this one was with Heidi's Fluffle Pack. There's a moon paper that I cut up. Loved a fussy cut because you can do some really cool designs like this. So I just lined them up top and bottom and put some around the edges here. And then I have these two photos of my husband. One is actually in color. One's in black and white, but to be honest, it's kind of, at first glance, you may not even notice that this one's in color. <laughs> and this is his Darth Vader costume that he wears at Halloween pretty frequently. And uh, all the kids love it. They always love it. It's so funny. He's, he's a scout leader and, and they love it. They think it's so cool. Uh, so just using some of that Heidi Swap Wolfpack collection. I really, really enjoyed that collection quite a lot. I did a lot of the kids scouting photos with it. It's just perfect for camping trips. And Halloween, apparently. <laughs> this one looks like it was probably using a, a grab bag challenge. I'm betting it's from that. Probably not one of the ones I did on camera. This is probably one where I was using up the last little bits of the grab bag. 
And this is documenting that we had gotten a fish tank. But my husband, uh, my husband, my uncle had given us a fish tank and then we went and bought some little fishes to put inside of it and used uh, that experience to learn about fish and about fresh water versus salt water, learn how to take care of fish. Turns out we were really bad at taking care of fish. So <laughs> they didn't last very long in our house, unfortunately, but we never could quite get it figured out. Um, and we had a couple incidences where one of the twins kept throwing candy in the tank, which was not good. Not good. Yes, Wolfpack, it was such a good collection. Love that collection. And the very last page is this one, which was a challenge. This was one of the Double Dare You challenges, I think. One of the first ones to use a large piece of wood veneer. And I, of course, had to get as much wood veneer on here as possible because I have loads of it. Absolutely loads of it. So I'm pretty sure this was one of the first Double Dare You challenges from this year, I think. So that came out pretty darn cute. That's it for this album. Uh, I will link the first two albums and you'll see when I do, when you do look through that, you will see that probably five or six of these pages are in the second album. I mean the first album because I hadn't started on this album <laughs> and I had to reshuffle I finished the first album and some of them made a little trip over to this album because they no longer fit. <laughs> I am trying to downsize soon though. Kelly Kit with style. Do you pick the photos first or the kit first? I, I pick the kit first, but only because I do this with my photos. And so I have printed all of my photos for 2017 and this is photos for the family album and for my kids albums and then I've labeled each photo or photos most of the case there's multiple photos in this case there's only one and I label it with pertinent information the date and what size of a layout that I want to do it on and then so what I can do is I will take a kit I will make a kit from my collection and then as I'm scrapping with it I will flip through the photos and find ones that match the kit and just pull them out and scrap them on the spot hey Leisha oh I'm sorry you missed it on <laughs> it'll be up pretty soon we're about to wrap up Thank you for joining though. I appreciate it very much. Hey, Christine. Yes, you're almost done with 2018 project life. Well done. Well done. That's amazing. This I'm on 2017. That's the album we're going to start working on. Well, I've already started working on it a little bit. It is a good system, but it takes ages to set up. This probably took me three days, honestly, to set up because you have to, A, I go through and I print, in a lot of cases, I print, uh, I have to collage photos together. And uh, so I have to figure out what photos I'm gonna print, collage the pertinent ones together, make my list, and then when they come back from the printer, then I have to go through, organize them, mark all of these up. But it's nice because then I just have to find photos and I have all the information I need on the back of that photo. And I don't even have to look at, oh, what year was that picture from? And oh, dang, where were we? Or what was going on? And so it does take a lot of time to set it up, but it makes scrapping so much easier. It just makes it such a fluid process to just kind of flip through. Okay, my kit's got orange, green, and blue. And so I'll kind of flip through, see what pictures I have that match. If I don't have any, which is unlikely with this many, but if I don't have any, then I'll go sit, look through my phone and see if I have any recent ones that would work. That's why you sometimes see recent ones thrown in the mix. 
just for fun. Oh, yeah, the iris containers are great, too. They are. I just already had the basket. <laughs> the iris container is probably better because it's closed, right? Isn't it? Wendy, isn't that a closed little box? Those photo boxes that they have? You have a Project Life project sheet, and you stick the photos with it and put it all together. Oh, how cool is that? That's a good idea. That's a great idea, Wendy. Like a template, is that what you're talking about? Is that like a template of how you want to, to do that page? That's really smart. That would probably be easier for me when uh, I would actually try Project Life because I haven't done pocket pages in a really long time because I just wasn't enjoying them. I would put them off and put them off. And I'm like, this is silly. Why am, I, why am I forcing myself to do pocket pages if I clearly don't enjoy them? I love how they look, but if I'm not enjoying the process, it's not really worth doing for me. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Oh, that's a great idea. You know what, Hannah? Actually, I don't have any in here. I have a bunch of those in my other desk that never made it over the craft room that are full of uh, themed ephemera that I never use <laughs> that has been in there for years that I've never touched. I actually have some of those, but this is nice because I don't have to open multiple boxes. I got a big stack of photos to flip through, you know, and just kind of go like, oh, what takes my fancy today? Yes. Some people are way more organized than me. This looks organized. It's really not. <laughs> like these post-its appear to be in color order. They are not. This, these post-its are in order of where they were on the post-it pad. <laughs> when I ran out of pink ones, I started using blue. When I ran out of blue ones, I started using green, yellow, whatever color this is. Uh, and then when I ran out of those, I started using scrap paper. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks it looks more color coordinated than it actually is <laughs> oh gosh you sort your ephemera by color I keep my collections together until they're done I don't know why I just do it that's just the way my brain works I will I have several times sat down to do a layout and thought oh I want to use this collection and so I go grab that collection and it has exactly what I want because I know what's in the collections. I have organized my scrap room so many times that I know what's in my collections. What I've kept in my stash is the stuff I love. So I know what's in them. And so my brain automatically goes, I want to use this collection and I'll go and get that one. Yes. See, I had sorted mine by theme because I knew color wouldn't work for me. I don't scrap by color alone. I tend to scrap more by theme. And so I had uh, taken all of my extra embellishments and uh, put them into those little iris containers by theme, like birthday, Christmas, etc. Never pulled them out. Never. I always go for the collection. Every time, every time I just go grab the collection and I use what's in the collection and I never go for that miscellaneous ephemera. Well, even if you see, and I say by collection, but even if you just organize it by designer, a lot of times the colors from each designer are similar in each collection. So if this color yellow in one collection is probably going to be pretty similar to the yellow they use in the next collection, because most designers tend to have a color palette that they're comfortable with, that they're uh, happy with. And so that's what they reach for when they're creating their collections. This is especially true with Elle Studio. All of her stuff matches. All of her stuff goes. And I love it. Felicity Jane does that too. And I really, really enjoy that. Yeah, it's when you get down to the end of a collection, it gets a bit tricky. What I've started doing is, <laughs> where did it go? Here, I have, uh, because I do smash booking, if I get to the end of a collection and I have some really random pieces, 
I will pop them in here and I use them for my smash book which I don't really use much collections for. I just use six by eight pads and whatever is in here normally for uh, my smash books. And this could be used for traveler's notebooks or pocket pages. And I find I use them so much better. I'm so much better at using up those extra bits and pieces. Yes. Yes. I agree, Michelle. I always go for the, a certain collection or if I'm using a certain collection, then I'm pulling photos to go with that collection. But because I have all of 2017 organized, I know I will get through 2017. That's the priority. These photos are first priority for me to go through and scrap. If I can't find anything that goes, then I'll go to current photos, but mostly I stick to what's in the basket. Yes, Simple Stories is another one that does a really good job of organizing color schemes within their collections. A lot of them go together and which is great. I love that. You've never gotten to the end of a collection. I haven't done it very often, but I will tell you that I don't usually buy the whole collection, especially if I buy the whole collection, it's because it's something that I want to add to my stash and intend to use in the future as well as now. But if it's a collection that I'm thinking, I love it, it's cute, but it's probably not one I will love in say five years, then I'll buy a small amount. I'll just buy maybe a couple of pieces of paper that really stand out to me, the six by eight or six by six paper pad and a couple of embellishment packs. You know, like the ephemera and the stickers and then stop and that gives me the opportunity to play with the collection without committing to the entire thing and then having to add it to my stash yes it's hard it's hard especially it's really hard sometimes to narrow down okay, I'm only going to get a few pieces. What am I going to get? And sometimes I will be sitting there staring at my computer screen. <laughs> I do better on the computer though. If I'm in person, I will impulse buy too much of the collection. But if it's on the computer screen, then quite often I can just say, okay, I really love these three papers. I'm going to get the small paper pad. That way I get most of the papers from the collection in that. And I'll get the stickers and the ephemera. And that's usually plenty for me to make, say, seven or eight layouts uh, if I stretch it a little bit. And, or, or less, sometimes it's five or six layouts. Depends on how paper heavy I get with it. <laughs> but it's enough for me to get a handful of layouts out and just be done. And then all I have is a few little bits and pieces that I can toss in here and use up in like junk journal, smash book, traveler's notebook, you know, project life where you don't necessarily need a whole collection to scrap with. One little stamped butterfly may be just what you need. Yes. You know, Hannah, I find as I have filled up my craft room and I have a certain amount of storage in my craft room and I don't really want more <laughs> stuff in there. So I've tried, that's why I've been doing these stash kits every month is to try to kind of move out the old and bring in the new and uh, just just try to rotate, if you will, my stock a little bit. I probably though do not have any collections in my stash that are more than maybe, maybe seven years old tops. And I'm thinking there's probably only two that would fall in that category of seven years old. Most of my stuff gets rotated through. Yes, we also need to think, I think it's helpful to, to think about how you scrapbook, to like to really start paying attention, look, flip through your albums, look through your stack of layouts. How do you scrap? What embellishments do you lean toward? Is it stickers? Is it ephemera? Is it, uh, do you just want pattern papers that you can fussy cut? Do you want the wood veneer? Do you want the sequins? Like what is your priority with getting a collection? And then when a new collection comes out, 
limit yourself just to those things that you know you're going to use. Oh, I will definitely use this. I will definitely use that, but probably won't use that. Or maybe I'd use that. Maybe let that go. Maybe don't get everything. <laughs> you have a collection that's 10 years old. I was talking to a friend who had a hard time with giving things up and she had some collections that I kid you not were 20 year old creative memory collections and I said to her well are you going to use them like do they call to you that you need to use them and she's like no <laughs> why are you keeping them and she and the real reason she was keeping them is because she spent money on them and felt guilty for getting rid of them because she spent the money and I thought, you know what, that's a really powerful message to me that being very careful and deliberate about how I spend my money so that I don't feel that way and regret buying something or so much of something, you know, because sometimes that's what it is. It's not the thing that we bought. It's the volume that we bought. And you think, oh man, I wish I'd just gotten one of each of those papers instead of five. <laughs> Oh gosh, it just, it takes practice. Oh, when you were on Click Kits. Yes, that's hard. It's, it's sometimes it's tricky being on uh, creative teams because then you don't often even get to pick what you're working with. And that's, that's tricky. That's really, really tricky. And then sometimes you end up with the leftovers that you may never use and you have to decide whether or not you keep those. It is easy to get FOMO. Mm -hmm. Fear of missing out is a real struggle for sure. Yes, Clarence. Oh, Clarence gets me every single time. Yes. <laughs> it costs me money, so it is mine. I hear you. I really do. I, I felt that way about more tools rather than paper collections because paper collections I'm like okay I spent money on this but if I'm not going to use it I can let it go I can flip through a paper collection and go well I'm not going to use this paper I'm not going to use this paper and maybe pull half the papers out and pass them on to my daughter or someone else who will use them and that's fine with me but with tools that's what kills me is because you've spent real money on these tools and sometimes it's $50, $60 on these tools or more if they're the electronic machines. And you don't want to just throw them away. You don't, I mean, you don't want to just feel like you've wasted your money. But being realistic, they're just taking up space in your craft room and not doing much good. And I, I hate that feeling too. Oh no, Michelle. <laughs> I had that happen in 2017. 2017 is when I found scrapbooking YouTube and Inky Quill in particular. And I saw the stuff that she used and I had never seen that before. I had only done creative memories, old school, 20 year old styled scrapbooking. That's all I knew. And when I saw her layout and her project life, I was is so blown away. And I had to have everything that she used <laughs> for my layouts. And after a year of that, I realized that I probably could never possibly use every little bit and piece that I had just bought in the last year. And I had spent so much money. On top of that, I discovered that I had been, I in my clearance shopping, had been buying a lot of, of those like, warehouse boxes and you know grab bags and things like that and so I was challenging myself to use them because I didn't want to waste them but ultimately I ended up with a ton of stuff I didn't even want because it was cheap and that took me a long time to sort out and to realize nah <laughs> nah <laughs> I'm not keeping all of this stuff that I will never use that's silly yeah, you didn't know what was new or hip. Oh, that's so funny. Mercy Tierra. Oh my goodness. Yes. 
yes. Mercy Tierra was, I think, probably the second big YouTuber that I found after Inky Quill. I don't even know how I came across Inky Quill. I really don't. I was looking through YouTube after I'd hurt my back that year and was on bed rest. And I happened across her YouTube channel and was hooked, was absolutely hooked. So by September of that year, I started my own YouTube channel just because I was so excited about what she was doing. I wanted to do it too. <laughs> Tuesday morning. Yeah, that one's, that's dangerous. <laughs> that is dangerous. Very, very dangerous. I've actually kind of quit going because I can't, I have no, yeah, no, there's no cheap suppliers in Australia. Oh, no, but you have easy access to cocoa vanilla, which is kind of better in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any and very many scrappy friends in person either. None of my friends scrapbook, none of my close friends. Uh, I know a few ladies from church who scrapbook, but uh, we can't really get together much anymore. So that's been kind of a shame. And I've really enjoyed chatting with you guys. I learned so much stuff on these live streams. I learned so much stuff from you guys. It's been really, really nice having people to chat with. Okay, Sandy, what did you say that was such a great idea? I missed it. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's a great idea, Sandy. Yes, well, at one of the crops that I, the one that I went to, they had like a free table and people could put out stuff that they didn't want anymore and then somebody else will pick it up, which was really nice. I thought that was a great idea. I thought that was a great idea. Uh, I've been to two crops that have done that and I thought that was a really, really good idea. <laughs> oh yes, yes, she does some, Adele does some great art journaling videos. Really, really enjoy her art journaling. I haven't been doing a lot of art journaling lately. It's been really hard to stay motivated with uh, all of my children at home. <laughs> they take up a lot of time. <laughs> so now lately it's been, I can steal an hour here to, to, to scrapbook. Let's go ahead and video it just so I can put it on YouTube. But I mean, it's, it's fun to sneak in, to sneak in a couple of scrappy times <laughs> each week. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Tuesday morning is such trouble. It is such trouble. It's hard because uh, often they have really good deals, but you have to dig. Often you usually have to dig. It's one of those discount stores you have to dig through to find stuff. For sure. Coco Vanilla is amazing. Yes, grab back. Felicity Jane, I will say, I have yet to get something from Felicity Jane that I didn't like. I have probably a handful of companies that I love everything they make. And so I know I wouldn't be disappointed in a grab bag from them, but I have learned there are some companies that uh, it's, it's up in the air. I like some of their stuff, but not all of their stuff. And it's wasting my money to buy things I won't use. So you got to know what you need. <laughs> you got to know what you need. <laughs> yes, Hannah, you are always welcome, my dear. Always, always, always welcome to join in with our little chats. Because uh, we, we, man, we get to talking about everything under the sun. <laughs> oh my goodness, just everything under the sun. It's hard. It is hard. Uh, they will be back to school soon enough. Well, we don't know. We don't know if they're going to be back in school or not. They actually may be schooling from home through the school. Come August, we'll have to wait and see what's going on. I mean, I love spending time with my kids. I mean, that's not even it. But when you're used to having that time to yourself during the day, and then, you know, for the last three months, everybody's been home, even my husband, which is very, very weird. And I'm loving it. I love having him at home. But it's also, you know, just a little bit different. It's taken a lot of adjusting, we'll say, for everybody's part. Everybody. Yes. 
I'm, I have tons of unboxings of warehouse boxes on my channel because I loved the surprise of them of you know not never knowing what you were going to get and it was exciting to open them up and see what you would get and you would love some of it but i think once i took stock of how much stuff i actually had and how much of it wasn't really something i would have purchased for myself it kind of caught my attention to the fact that these warehouse boxes aren't always the best thing for me even Felicity Jane, I love Felicity Jane, but I have a drawer full of Felicity Jane that I have not touched. And I have told myself I won't buy any more until I've used up some of that drawer. That's something I learned from Tracy Claiborne. She's on the Scrap Gals podcast, and she talked about that. She has a specific drawer for this certain thing. And once that drawer is full, she can't get any more until she's emptied some of that drawer. And I thought that was a great way to look at it. And it's helped me kind of keep my stash under control. Definitely helpful. <laughs> well, I have really enjoyed talking to y'all too. I mean, it's been great for my mental health. So good for my mental health because we're stuck in the house. We just are. We're trying to be super, super careful. Uh, and the, our, our state is not being super careful. And so we're just having to pretty much stay home 100% of the time. It's, it's been great for my mental health to have some, uh, some y'all to chat with. It's been really, really nice. Oh yes. Boy stuff. Oh man. Boy stuff is hard. It, you know, I find that a lot of girl collections, even like teen girl collections, are super themey too, and I just don't buy them. I don't buy them. Uh, I do. I will fall sucker for a themed boy collection here or there. <laughs> I have been known <laughs> to be a sucker for those, though. You know, I got a Gossamer Blue warehouse box just before they closed, and I was actually really impressed with it. I kind of wish I had found that company earlier. Definitely. Cocoa Vanilla is tricky to find, and it's a little pricey, but it's so versatile. I really enjoy it. I was getting it from either Christina at Secret Not Secret Kit Club or from my, what was it, my little scrapbook store. I think that's right. My little scrapbook store sounds right. They both carry cocoa vanilla. And then in Canada, scrapbookyourjoy.com carries it as well. And she always has great prices on her stuff. And because I'm in the US, I or would order like a ton of it and get a great exchange rate and free shipping. I really, really, I ordered from her a lot. It's not very good quality. What's not very good quality? Cocoa vanilla? I haven't had any issues with quality on cocoa vanilla. It's a lot thicker than the paper here in the US, I'll tell you that. Our patterned paper is definitely not that thick. It is a bit slick though. Like um, patterned papers from American Craft tend to be, let me pull on an example. So this one from Heidi Swap. It's more of a kind of a uh, matte finish and it's a little bit thinner, but Cocoa Vanilla has, it's not a glossy finish, but it almost feels kind of slick. Not quite photo paper slick, but similar. So it has a similar feel, but it's thicker. It's definitely a, a, a sturdier paper than most of the American craft stuff that we get. At least that's what I find. So I guess it depends. If you're not, if you don't like that uh, that slick feel to it, then I can see that. Yes, cutting your budget has helped a lot. I did a, a spending freeze last year and did pretty well with it. Uh, I think I did it for few months at the beginning of the year and I enjoyed it so much I just could kept going with it and really didn't spend hardly anything which was nice 
No, see, Michelle, the way I get around the drawer thing with cocoa vanilla is I don't put cocoa vanilla in a drawer. I also have, I have those like uh, magazine holder style boxes that hold 12 by 12 paper. And so I have four of those full of cocoa vanilla. Therefore, if it's not in a drawer, I cannot run out of space. You see how that thinking works? <laughs> Teen collections are super hard to use. Super, super hard to use for sure. Bicycles. <laughs> Michelle, you know my feeling about bicycles. <laughs> I am so tired of finding bicycles in collections. They have been in every collection for years. So tired of them. And my kids don't even ride bicycles. They have them, but they don't ride them. They haven't ridden bikes in a long time. So it's, uh, nah. <laughs> yeah, cocoa vanilla is very good quality. I enjoy it. I like it. Yes, I saw that CBS had a big sale after International Scrapbook Day, but the pricing would kill me. Yeah, this it's like semi-gloss. I think you're right. It's like semi-gloss. I don't know if that's changed or if I just never noticed it before. So you tell me, Michelle, is that something new that it's become like almost semi-gloss, almost like photo paper feeling? Uh, it's still super thick, but it is kind of slick, which is interesting it doesn't bother me it's just interesting to notice when you're handling that it's different graphic 45 has some gorgeous collections sandy for sure they have some beautiful collections wow 3d sticker sheets is 20 dollars in australia holy cow michelle that's crazy the prices for y'all stuff is nuts Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's, that blows my mind. Bicycles are the new mustaches. <laughs> you know what, Hannah, I missed out on the mustaches thing and I'm kind of glad that I did <laughs> because my husband doesn't have one and I'm not really a fan. So. <laughs> oh. It must be new. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah, their older stuff was, was more the matte, like the American Crafts, but thicker. And this newer stuff is thick, but it's kind of slick. And it just sort of threw me off with this legendary collection. I think it's for the first time I noticed it. Yes, that's true. Everything is expensive in Australia. Oh, so true. So true. Someday, someday, I would love to come to Australia and see Australia and New Zealand. But, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm lucky it was a horribly weird trend. <laughs> you know, I've caught like the tail end of a few weird trends and I was like, oh, I'm glad I didn't get into that. Well, the other one that was uh, metal, using metal on your pages. That was before my discovery of what's new, what's in trend, what's hippie and hip. And I just didn't really get into metal embellishments at all. Right? I get a good exchange rate. <laughs> this is true. I would love to come to Australia and New Zealand. We actually talked about how we would love to live in New Zealand. embellishments I do sometimes it really depends but I have I keep in mind that I have so much stuff and I think if I didn't I probably would do more DIY embellishments but I feel like if I have so many embellishments in my stash already I should just use them uh, so quite often I'll make clusters with them and like punch out pattern paper and put that behind the clusters and things like that just to, just to kind of make my own DIY embellishments. I don't do that quite as much anymore. I do enjoy them though. It's really fun to do DIY embellishments and then fill the background with them. That's my 
favorite way to use them. I love it. It's a, that's an Adele technique that I love. Absolutely love. Australia is gorgeous. <laughs> I would love to visit. I don't think I could live there. Y'all are a, a hearty bunch to live in Australia because between the high temperatures and the bugs and animals, <laughs> I don't do outdoors here. <laughs> Giant spider wasps? No, thank you. <laughs> oh gosh, you didn't use them. See, I wasn't using them very, very often either. I would use them more on cards or like I said, to fill a whole background with them. And that's, it's kind of fun. It's fun to do. It's a little bit different of a, of a technique. And it's definitely fun to do. Uh, I just have been on like the side of what's faster lately because I just don't have a lot of time to scrap. And so I sit down with a container of embellishments and a stack of papers and just go from there. What can I accomplish quickly? <laughs> Off to bed. I'm so glad you could hop in, Annie. I'm so glad you could hop in. I'm going to wrap things up, ladies. I really have enjoyed your flip through of layouts for you that I made in May and June. And two of those will be going in here to finish off this album. So I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will uh, see you later. I'll have a video up on Sunday. I will have a video up on Sunday for quick six by six tricks. Oh, thank you. Yes, Michelle, that's exactly why that group is there, so that you don't feel like I have to be the coolest person on the block to post my layout. I can post whatever I make. It's it's about, hey, look what I made, and, and kind of sharing that, because I know a lot of us, we make these albums, and then nobody ever sees them, and so it's kind of really nice have a small group that you can just share hey look what I look, check this out isn't this cool and you're inspiring other people who maybe love the way you scrap and like oh, I want to try that and that's why I started the YouTube channels I was like I was so inspired by these people creating these gorgeous layouts and I was like I want to try that and I want to hopefully inspire somebody else maybe somebody who's never scrapped before to just to give it a go Yes. Good night, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Wonderful weekend. Australia is gorgeous and I would love to visit. I just don't think I could handle living there. <laughs> all right. And have a great, great weekend. I hope you all enjoy it and stay safe. Stay safe. Bye, guys.